Hello, Professor Jakovich here, and now we're going to compute things other than present value and future value in time value of money problems. So, what happens when you know the present value and you know the future value, but you don't know something else in the problem? You don't know the rate, or you don't know the number of periods, or you don't know the payment. Well, I'm going to show you how to compute those. So let's start with the stickiest, stickiest one right off the bat, and that is rate. So you have $3,000 to invest for your new baby's college education. You expect to pay about $200,000 in 18 years for her education. So you know the present value. It's $3,000. You're going to invest it, so that means it's negative $3,000. Your future value is going to be a positive $200,000 because that's when you're going to take it out and use it. The rate here is what we're trying to solve for, so that's question mark. Now, um, number of periods. Ah, 18 years. It's given in the problem. Payment. There is no payment. This, this problem is actually not an annuity. It's just a lump sum of 3000 now and 200000 at the end. It's one of those bookend problems where nothing goes on in the middle. So the payment is zero and the type is zero. Now, we can solve for it because we have all the proper variables. So what are we solving for? Well, in Excel, remember I have said in other videos, you say equals and exactly what you're trying to solve for. So we're going to say equals rate and then open parenthesis and ta-da! There we have everything we need to put into the problem and in what order. So first, number of periods, 18, click and then comma, payment, click it, and then comma, present value, click it, and then comma, future value, click it, and then comma, type is zero, I'll click it, and then comma, and then look, the last one says guess. How about we just back out that comma and don't do a guess. Whenever you see guess in this class, just ignore it as if it wasn't there and you just close it before you even get to the guess. So now it's time to hit enter. 26%. However, percents, 26 and a half percent is different than 26.9%. So it's best to go to home and then see this zeros less or more. I want to increase the decimal, so I'll click it twice. 26 and about a quarter percent is our annual rate. So that's awesome. But then we're going to change this. And this is where it gets sticky. Here we were doing years. What rate will we need to achieve this goal? We were assuming annual because when a problem doesn't tell you something other than annual, you assume annual. So but now, what rate will we need if interest compounds monthly? Ooh, now we have something other than annual. So that changes. Now, notice that everything here is highlighted. Rate, number of periods, and payment. That pertains to the two notes I have up, the, the note I have up here. They must always, those three must always be on the same time basis. Whatever the shortest time mentioned in the problem, whether it be monthly in this case, quarterly, semi-annually, whatever it is, all three of those must be on that time frame. And I'll show you how that works. So we now have monthly. Well, rate, we as we know, is always given in annual terms. So how do we do this? Well, the present value and future value won't change. So those 
are going to stay the same. And 200,000. Type will stay the same. But these three are going to change a little bit. Payment is still zero. There's, even though interest is compounding monthly, the number of periods is no longer 18 years. It's 18 times 12 months per year. So right in here, I'm going to put 18 times 12, 216 months in 18 years. So that's the number of periods we have now. What is the rate? Well, if our rate is 26.28 annually, we're still going to have, we're going to solve here, but what we get will end up being a monthly rate and we will have to multiply by 12 at the end. So we're going to say, this is our question mark. We're going to work it again. Equals rate, open parenthesis, number of periods, payment, comma, present value, comma, future value, comma, and type, and we're going to ignore guess again and close it out. 2%. Oh, very different, isn't that? But once again, I'm going to go here and increase the decimal. It's 1.96%. This, however, is a monthly rate. And by law, rates must be given in annual terms. So we have to multiply by 12. So equals this rate times 12. The answer to our problem is 23.56%. So let me convert this. It's a decimal now. I'm going to go back to home and ta-da, there's a percentage. Boom. It turned it to percent, but it got rid of my decimals. So back to decimals, 23.56%. So the rate will change if it compounds more often. So that's, I will only need, if it's compounding a lot more often, I don't need as high a rate to get to my 200,000 as I will if it only compounds once a year, if it's an annual rate. So with rate, if the time frame is anything other than annual, you have two steps. First, work everything at the lowest, shortest time frame, and then convert your rate back to annual at the end. Okay, that's it for rate. Let's go on to number of periods. You have saved $30,000 up. You've saved. It's earning 8% interest. It's compounded quarterly. Ooh, how long will it be until your savings double? Which means we know the future value. So we are going to have a present value of negative 30000 because we have to invest it. The future value will be 60000 uh, the rate, ah, see these three are highlighted to remind us that our rate is not 8%. It's a quarterly rate. So it's going to be 8% divided by four. Because there are four quarters in a year, 8% is for the whole year. How much is for a quarter? 2%, eight divided by four. So it's just going to be 2% here. Now, what if it was some weird number like 13.68% uh, interest? Well, you can let Excel do the math for you. And I'll show you how. You put equals, and then I'll say you put your number that's given to you. You make sure the percent is in the numerator, the top. And then I divide by 4 for quarterly. If I hit Enter... It'll give it a decimal, which is just fine. Excel will work with a decimal, or if I just put two, then I have to put the percent sign, 2%. Two percent. 
So number of periods is what we're trying to solve for. The payment is nothing and the type will be zero. Okay. Once again, what are we solving for? Payment equals payment, open parenthesis. We put in the rate, comma, number of period. Oop, I did payment, sorry, that's the next one. <laughs> equals number of periods, and then the rate, <laughs> comma, payment, comma, present value, comma, future value comma, and then type and close parenthesis, enter. It's number of periods is just over 35 periods before my money will double. Now, this is 35 quarters of a year. So if I divide by four, I'll be able to figure out how many years, if you want to, you don't have to. Eight and three quarters of a year, which is nine months. So eight years and nine months till my money doubles at 2% per quarter, compounding or 8% a year. So this is how many quarters and this is how many years. I guess I should write that. Okay. And the last one is the one I started jumping to earlier is payment. What if we don't know the payment? Okay, we have two problems. Your goal is to have a million dollars in your retirement fund by the time you turn 60 in 20 years, meaning we're 40 right now. You currently have 300,000 in the fund. Oh, there's our present value, minus 300,000 because we have to invest it. How much will we need to invest every year if our investment is earning 10% to reach that goal of a million dollars. So that million is our, is our future value. Okay, so the rate is 10%. The number of periods is 20 years. Payment is our question mark and type is zero. So now we can solve for the problem. Equals payment open parenthesis and we click on the rate, comma, number of periods, comma, present value, comma, future value, comma, and type and close. All right. Our payment every year for 20 years needs to be $17,778.26. That's how much we have to add on top of the 300,000 we already have. If we do that, we'll have a million dollars in 20 years. Problem two is a little bit of a complication. What if we intend to invent, invest monthly instead of annually. Ah, here's where the three yellow things come into place. It's something other than annually. We've got to adjust these. So our present value and future value will stay the same. Negative 300,000 with a future value of, of a million. I think that's a million, yes. Um, our rate is 10%, but it's actually going to be 10% uh, divided by 12 to change an annual rate into a monthly rate. So equals 10% divided by 12. Notice that I put the percent in the numerator. If I put it after the 12, it will give, give you an error. Okay. I can hit enter and it'll give me a decimal, which is fine. Number of periods is, well, it was going to be 20 years, but now it's by months. So we have to do equals 20 years times 12 years per month is 240 months. Payment is still what we're trying to compute and type is still zero. So let's solve for that equals 
a payment, open parenthesis, of rate, comma, number of periods, comma, present value, comma, future value, comma, and type, close parenthesis. Okay. If we plan to invest every month, our monthly payment will be $1,578.18. So what we're looking at now is we have $300,000 in our account and every single month for the next 20 years, we're going to put in $1,578.18. That will get us to a million dollars in 20 years also. So there you go. You now know how to solve for rate, number of periods, and payment.